Forget cholesterol. Stress is the main cause of heart disease, as new evidence is starting to demonstrate. So let me tell you about a recent cardiac story. Ken had no fears about his routine heart checkup. His levels of fatty acid lipids in his blood were normal, and his cholesterol readings were textbook perfect. Not surprisingly, really, for a man who ate tofu instead of beef and who always went for the healthiest options, he even ran the 15 miles to the clinic for his assessment. But when he got there, the cardiologist urged him to have an emergency surgery. His arteries were badly blocked, and he was in imminent danger of a life-threatening heart attack. It didn't make sense, or at least not according to the prevailing theory, that heart disease is caused by eating fatty foods. Although Ken's diet was exemplary, his cardiologist didn't know he was grieving the death of his young son, and it seems his grief was damaging his arteries and his heart. Ken's experience isn't unique. Parents' risk of a sudden heart attack is three times more likely in the weeks after the death of a child, and the risks remain 20% greater for years afterwards, according to researchers who evaluated the heart health of 126,000 parents who had lost a child. The death of a child is one of the most stressful things we can experience, but other stresses can also cause cardiovascular disease. People who are socially isolated are one and a half times more likely to suffer from heart disease, while those who suffer stress of work have a 1.3% higher risk. Stress, anger, and depression can all trigger coronary vascular disease, according to heart attack and stroke research at University College London. It's not a new idea. English physician William Herberton noted in the 1700s that angina is increased by a disturbance of the mind, while a newspaper correspondent wrote in the London Times in 1872 that the rising heart disease deaths were the result of great mental strain and hurried excitement. Even this year, in a headline in the New York Times, suggested that stress may be your worst enemy. So let's look at the low-fat diet myth. Most cardiologists don't agree. Instead, they hold to the diet heart hypothesis, which maintains that saturated fat in our diet that raises our levels of low-density lipoproteins or LDL cholesterol, commonly called the bad cholesterol, which clogs arteries, otherwise known as atherosclerosis, and restricts the flow of blood to the heart and eventually causes a heart attack or stroke. Now, this theory launched the multi-billion dollar cholesterol lowering statin industry and the rise of low-fat foods and drinks, but with very little supportive ed evidence. As one of the reviews put it, dietary recommendations were introduced for 220 million people in the US and 56 million people in the UK in 1983 in the absence of supporting evidence from any randomized controlled trials. So to come to this conclusion, researchers from CSI University of Medicine and Health Sciences in Dublin analyzed 21 studies to discover the impact that statins had on reducing the risk of heart attack and stroke. In other words, when your levels of LDL cholesterol fall, does your risk of developing heart disease also diminish? Many of the studies they reviewed had used relative risk as the measure of the drug's effectiveness, with several showing they reduced the risk of heart attack by 29%. But relative risk is a statistical sleight of hand routinely used by drug researchers. If, for example, there is an absolute risk that two people out of every hundred will develop heart disease, a drug that reduces the risk by 50% means that just one person in 100 will have the problem. 50% is a headline figure, but in fact the drug is helping just 1% of people. When the Irish research is applied across the studies, the benefits disappeared. So the drug helps 29% of people. Its absolute risk benefit was just 1.3%.
These results have a deeper significance and suggest that LDL cholesterol isn't a cause of heart disease. Although statins were lowering levels, they weren't having any impact on the rates of heart attacks. Don't get stressed about it. So despite the lack of solid evidence that dietary cholesterol theory just won't go away. But then neither does the idea that stress causes coronary vascular disease. But first, what do we mean by stress? Well, essentially, stress is any situation in which we feel we're no longer in control or we feel overwhelmed. So it can be caused by problems at work, in a marriage, financial problems, by the death of a child or a loved one, and even by trauma that happened when you were young. Even the sudden stress from natural disasters can increase the rate of heart attacks. In 1994, the rate leapt fivefold on the day there was a major earthquake in California, while the rate of heart disease doubled in Athens immediately following the 1981 earthquake. Also, office staff faced with a high-pressure deadline at work were six times more likely to suffer a heart attack in the first 24 hours after the deadline had passed. Major studies have confirmed these findings. The InterHeart study, which monitors around 25,000 people, has found that stress at work increases the risk of a heart attack, and those most at risk face continual stress. The PURE study, which tracked the health of more than 115,000 people, concluded that those who suffered high levels of stress over most of the 10 years of the trial were 22% more likely to develop coronary vascular disease. Dying from a broken heart may be stuff of romantic fiction, but cardiologists have found that it actually happens. People who have suffered intense physiological distress, such as death, a violent attack, or major financial loss, shows sudden damage to the heart that mimics an actual heart attack, usually one to five days after the event. A broken heart even has a medical name, takutsubu, cardiomyopathy, and is a sudden weakening of the heart muscle, invariably triggered by acute stress, including physical exertion. Brazilian cardiologist Mesquita took things a stage further with his myogenic theory. After treating thousands of patients who had suffered a heart attack, yet whose arteries were clear, Mesquita concluded that a heart attack originates in the heart, not from the blocked arteries. He had also noticed that anticoagulants, which clear plaque from blocked arteries, weren't reversing unstable angina, pectoris, or severe chest pain which is usually the stage before a heart attack. Instead, cardiotonic drugs such as digoxin and digitoxin have been used for years to successfully treat angina pectoris and heart attacks by making the heart itself more efficient and improving its ability to pump blood. According to Mesquita, the hardening of the arteries, or atherosclerosis, central to the dietary cholesterol theory happens when the heart starts to fail and cannot push enough blood through the arteries to keep them functioning. Instead, artery health has little to do with heart disease. Part of the heart can be weakened by all the usual suspects, such as smoking, high blood pressure, and diabetes, because they trigger the release of, ho of stress hormones, such as adrenaline. Certain stress can be the final blow to our part of the heart that has already been weakened. It's not cholesterol. Heart disease is still a mystery. Even though statin drugs recently reached 1 trillion in sales worldwide and low-fat foods aren't far behind, coronary vascular disease is still a major killer. Evidence that saturated fats don't raise levels of LDL cholesterol continues to mount, although processed foods may have a part to play. Stress in its many forms looks more likely the key culprit as has been intuitively felt all along. But even then, stress is subjective. What one person can handle with these will make another a quivering wreck. Despite these reservations, more die from a broken heart than from cholesterol. Guys, thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this discussion. Please let me know your comments in the section below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, this is the time to do it. And also, if you have time, give me a thumbs up. Guys, thank you for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you next time.